All right, so now we've finished our 104.3 kilometer run. Um, we're doing some uh, reflection on what an experience it was. Um, and we've got some questions to kind of bounce back and forth about our experience and, um, you know, why we chose to do certain things. And I guess starting right off the bat with why did we decide to run 104 kilometers? And how we came up with the idea. Yeah. I don't actually remember that. Well, I do. Really? Okay. Okay, so it started in um, a conversation on the car on the way up from Canberra where I was yeah. like, oh, look, I'm going to go to China in January and I've got a few extra days. So I might, you know, go for a beach holiday. You know, Thailand sounds nice. Um, I know so it was from Thailand, so I was like, hey, any chance that you're going to be around? Um, that would be kind of cool to do Thailand with a local. And he was like, yeah, let me get back to you. And then he was like, oh, um, I actually have to get back to Japan. Do you want to go to Japan? And I was like, yeah, you know, beach holiday, Japan, same thing. <laughs> um, so that kind yeah. of started it. And then after that, um, we just, I don't know, after that, what happened? I feel like you wanted to run to Mount Fuji. Yeah. But you also knew that Hakone would be cool. So I was like, why not? Hakone and then do something else after, oh, like yeah. the next day. So I wanted to visit Mount Fuji because I yeah. was like, that's the cool thing to do. It's close to Tokyo. Um, yeah. And then we were kind of like, oh, it's a bit cold to go up all the way up to Mount Fuji. So why don't we just, you know, hang around the base? Because I didn't want to bring all of my winter clothes. And then uh, we were like, oh, why not run it? Yeah, well, I guess if we, if we ran to Mount Fuji or to the base, like with with there, we can't really see it, but yeah. Whereas from Hakone, it'll be good mm. views, you know. Like yeah. we see Mount Fuji. And I think a lot yeah. of my friends had also, or the people who had done Japan a lot, were like, Hakone is a great spot. It's um, you know, up in the mountains. It's really scenic. You get um, the lake views as well, and then Mount Fuji up the back. And I was like, say less, you know, fantastic. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm about. Yeah. So. And I guess on top of that, like, I personally just want to do something crazy anyway. I mean, I'm sure you did as well, obviously. Yeah. But, um, just because I want to work on becoming a better ultra rider this year, again. Again, I mean, the second year in a row. Yeah, I've originally planned on going back to 5 Kings this year, but on second thought, I feel like I want to do more ultras. Yeah. And get even better. Yeah. I think ultras are a really, like, mind-bending event to take on. It's kind of a little bit different, like, I guess anyone can kind of, well not anyone, but um, it's far easier to be able to like run a 5k or a 10k, but to kind of stay uh, on your feet for 14 hours at a time consistently yeah. and to keep trying to push through walls, it's really interesting. And I think that's one, like, one thing that I find really appealing about an ultra. Yeah. Um, and I think I kind of started doing, I started doing an 80 kilometer first and I think I've kind of like roped Sota into, <laughs> yeah. into that world as well, so. It's fun, I don't regret it. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, in a marathon you hit like one wall, but in all trains you hit like multiple. <laughs> yeah, multiple walls, and you kind of get past them and then you hit another one and You lose count, like can, yeah. can you tell how many times you hit the wall today? No, right? No. I can't either. No, yeah. um, I think my biggest wall though was at like 60 or 70 kilometers. Yeah where I like I was almost just like throwing up in my mouth with every step yeah and I was like this is this mm. is the worst thing I've ever done like who's who's decided to take a relaxing holiday to Japan <laughs> and then you know just run a hundred kilometers in their spare time yeah. um but now that we've done it, it yeah. Nice. yeah I'm so like fulfilled yeah. satisfied really happy yeah. my lungs kind of hurt from how dry it is in Japan though um so I'm kind of wheezing and apologies if I sound really <clears throat> yeah that's, yeah. that's why. <laughs> All right, so the next question is, what was your highest moment? Like, the moment where you were like, yes, this is it. This is the peak of my life during the 100 kilometer run. <laughs> I have a feeling you're going to say a certain thing. So mm -hmm. I'm going to pick something different. But how about you start? Because okay. I, I feel like I know what you're saying. Um, okay, so I think for me, I had a few probably high moments, but there was like one particular one where we had just started running along the beach and we went up to um, like a crossing over, over a bunch of roads and just, it was just the most like picturesque thing because yeah, there's like yeah. roads going down that way and then Mount Fuji perfectly smack bang in the middle yeah. in the background and I was like, this is crazy, like 
it's so beautiful and it's just on the left you had the beach as well which um is it's interesting, interesting. Yeah. yeah because i didn't realize that japan really had beaches but there was a beach there <laughs> yeah um and then so left on the beach and then right smack down the center was mount fuji yeah literally so that was my highest moment what was just what was your i knew you were gonna say that i felt like maybe you can say first and i can think about it during but yeah well i mean i was very moment. vocal i was yeah. like this is incredible yeah <laughs> Um, it's tricky. I, I always struggle to answer when people ask like, what was the highest moment of, of whatever. I mean, purely based off of emotion, it must have been closer to the start because, mm. you know, spirits are high. Yeah. Like, we're feeling good that we're going to do this very quickly, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I think um, at the beginning we were like slamming yeah. out 5.30s, um, just yeah. pounding the streets. Yeah. So much like, yeah, high energy, we were like really talkative yeah. and it was great vibes yeah and then it kind of went down but like not downhill that much. but we still enjoyed it as well. yeah, yeah like less talking yeah. but yeah. more just um i'd say probably mm. being in being in your head a bit more which yeah. is yeah i can cop out honestly but i have to pick something right yeah <laughs> honestly actually i know mm. eating cup noodles oh i've got uh, window was that must be no i know 75 cakes yeah i actually know 75 cakes mm is when I had a cup noodle and that was so good. It brought you back to life a bit? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Actually, you saw me. I was enjoying it. Yeah. Like, we were just standing far away from each other. You were on the fence and I was just standing yeah. and eating it. I, I was, was trying to just sit it. down yeah. and you were just, like, so happy to just be on your feet but still, like, just eating a cup of noodles. I was like, wow, yeah. great. <laughs> Pretty basic, but that was my high moment, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Lowest okay. moment now. Lowest moment. Um, I think I just mentioned before, but there was a period around 60 kilometers where i was like sort of like throwing up with every step and i kept apologizing as well i was like i'm so sorry this is this is not it um but what happened was i think at like 40 to 50 i didn't really eat anything because i'd gotten really sick of all like my sweet stuff because i brought i basically went in to my like running drawer and like swooped all of the nutrition i had and it was just like a bunch of gels and cliff uh cliff chewies um and like muesli bars and things and so they're all really sweet and then by the time i got to 50 i was like right i need to like hit up the convenience store get some savory into me and i just had like a bit of a smorgasbord and then that really came and bit me in the butt because i was like just trying to like trot along but every i'd say every 100 meters i'd like just turn and like gag and it was really not my not my best moment yeah not not very good mm. um and yours lowest moment i mean it's annoying because um i feel like the pace was pretty manageable today apart from obviously towards the end well yeah when we had to go uphill and it was obviously harder but yeah anyway i think the point i'm trying to make is i'll get back to you on, on this i'll probably put a text on the screen when i edit it like right here but i have a feeling i'm not going to be sore tomorrow because I don't think my muscles were working that hard today. Like, it felt pretty alright. The thing that was limiting me was my knees, and I forgot when it was, but it was obviously near the end. But, like, both my knees started hurting. Mm. Um, and it was just the joints, like, not, nothing muscle-related. And I felt this in back out ultra as well, which is why I quit. But I feel like I endured it for longer this time, so mm. I guess I'm proud of that. But to feel like you're being held back just by that, um, kind of felt crap yeah it was, it was tough yeah. towards the end so the whole thing was pretty yeah. much flat until we had to climb the mountains yeah. to get to Hokone um and mm. we were going up all these like flights of stairs yeah and I could kind of tell like Soda was um mm. in like a lot of pain and stuff with, yeah. with climbing mm. those stairs because there's yeah. a lot of them just to get context it was literally the inside and outside so medial and lateral side of both knees that was hurting mm. um and usually when it's one of them you can actually adapt your gate a little bit to ease the tension off of it but there's nothing much you can do when it's like both sides of both legs so you probably yeah. spent like a good more than an hour mm. with those problems trying to get back yeah. so mm. yeah it was tough yeah. yeah well i guess we should do most interesting moment as well which i'm gonna answer on both of our behalf okay but it had to be the part where you know we thought we were near the end but oh. we get sent by google maps into the trail yeah and the sun had set yeah 
<laughs> it was just not the vibes. No, the sun is the sun was set, but because it's like the mountains as well, it was like the sun was like long gone below the mountains, and Google Maps was like, yeah, take a left here, and we we're like, okay, like there's a trail here. <laughs> Um, and then I kept going down, yeah. and it was pitch black yeah. because the trees were so high as well. Um, and it was really, mm. really rocky, and we were like, I would say we're probably like below walking pace trying yeah. to get down. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And we were like, nah, this this ain't it's it. Take like, you yeah. we, all it was really doing was avoiding one switchback, yeah. and we were like, nah, the road's probably a safe op. Like, yeah. I think I'd rather get like hit by a car <laughs> than to roll an ankle again. So <laughs> that's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like she was saying, we were on the road for a lot of the last bit, which was quite scary as well because it was dark. So yeah, we um, yeah. underprepared on the headlights side. For sure, yeah. So we were yeah. kind of jumping. There wasn't a designated um, footpath for a lot of the last like five k. Yeah. So we were kind of bouncing on and off the roads as well while yeah. cars and buses were coming past. Um, and it wasn't really well lit either, so we we're pretty mm. much in pitch black. Yeah. And I guess that kind of was a bit of a challenge because we were just yeah. like already so tired, already like m my brain had left, you know, yeah. ages ago. Um, but still yeah. trying to like make sure that we we're being safe. On yeah, the roads. but to be super honest with you, I think we handled it pretty much early because I think a lot of people would have panicked quite hard. Yeah. You know, and all that. But but well, the specific tips that I think. Yeah as runners you kind of know like when you've got a bend coming up you always want to try and like take the outside so that it gives the driver a better chance of seeing you mm. um using the like footpath or just like jumping into the train line for the couple seconds while the cars pass and then hop back on the road yeah so there also i reckon there was i mean not that we complain too much but there was more complaining between like 60 to 80k than the last minute i feel like our yeah. spirits were kind of high in the end even though we we're going through a tougher situation yeah because all we're doing is climbing up and a walking back. pace yeah yeah i agree with that as well i think yeah um, we handled it well I yeah think. yeah cool what's okay. the next question would you recommend this to it's, another person it's a tricky one if you love japan why not you know um i think the one disclaimer i want to put is you know obviously most of it's pretty flat and runnable and then as soon as you get to 90k, you're going to be hit with the toughest uphill mm. of your life. So um, be ready for it if you And if like you I said, you're, there's no footpath. So, you know, after 90k, you probably will be feeling a little bit delirious, not as mentally sharp. So, yeah, um, I think keep that in mind as well. So I guess one option is run to the base of whatever mountain we're on right now, Hakone Mountain. Is yeah. that a mountain? I don't yeah. know. And then take a bus up, because there are buses. Yeah, we saw um, a lot of buses. But we were pretty stubborn. We, I considered taking the bus up <coughs> at the first bus stop, but then I thought through it properly, and I was like, you know what, we didn't come all this way to just take a bus the rest of the way. Like, yeah. We're finishing it even if we walk, you know? So yeah, yeah. After that, I didn't even think twice after every other bus stop. I was just like... And we saw fast. a lot of bus stops as yeah. well. We were like, oh, you know, that would be nice, but yeah. no, we're good. Yeah. Um, I think, would I recommend this to someone else? I think, um, I think what made it an experience for me is because I'm obviously a tourist. Um, I got to see like a lot of shrines. I got to see the beaches. I got to see like the roads, the suburban and the city. Um, and then the beautiful mountains up here. And we're staying um, in Hakone for a couple of nights. So we'll be able to explore a bit more. Yeah. Um, the other thing as well that I think was great was that Soda knows Tokyo really well and really well I don't know I do I well you, you can speak the language you can yeah. talk to people um and also tag teaming with a friend me. as well with like navigation yeah um helps because you're so tired mm. that like if one of you's got nav like the other one can kind of relax a bit yeah. more and focus on running it's mentally draining and yeah to be fair i reckon you carried in the second half so i appreciate that <laughs> that's okay you carried yeah. in the first half <laughs> cool because tokyo was um it was a bit like it was hard at the start yeah there's a lot of like random lefts and rights and yeah and so what we did is we picked landmarks um on ekaden to try and like get to yeah um but then we also found that google maps would take you really weird ways like mm. there were times when we were trying to like get somewhere and wanted to take you down like a really small dark alleyway and we're like mm -mm, no no that's not good yeah. um so we'd go around but i think apple maps when i started nabbing in the second half 
pulled through a bit better. Mm. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, I think you were using Google Maps and Google, um, Google Maps was like, yeah, take this ra random trail. Yeah. It'll save you some time. And we were like, yeah. mm, no. And it was also like, I don't know if you remember, but near the start, it was like, take this like alleyway, which is one meter wide yeah. and barely runnable. Like. And it was also still like pitch black. And we were like, I can't even see down yeah. there. So yeah. we're going to not do that one. That was crazy. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, if you um, really want to go sightseeing in Japan, um, want to experience city, country, beach, all of that. I think the main cool thing recommend. was you could see, you know, Tokyo, big metropolitan city, big population, slowly turn suburban. Mm. And it was like very gradual. So yeah. It was so subtle that it was so smooth, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then like yeah. it kind of turned into like beach towns as well, yeah. which was a little bit yeah. of a vibe. Yeah. yeah. And then we did mountains. We got the whole experience. Yeah. Beach, mountain, city. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Um, time to talk about organization and how we sort of did it. So there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Do you want to start with um, like what we did beforehand, before like yeah. running and um, like obviously we chose accommodation in Hakone and then we um, used the delivery system, the exactly. Japanese delivery system to box up some clothes to send down. Yeah, otherwise we would we would not be in this right now. No. Yeah. Which meant that we saved space in our like vest and we didn't have to bring yeah. all of our like backpack stuff. Mm. That being said, um, we did try and cram as much as in our backpacks as we could because yeah. there are things like, you know, our phones, electronics, um, extra jumpers, gloves, passports, money, Space all that sort of stuff it. that you need. Yeah. Portable charger. Yeah. Yeah. Which GoPro came in batteries because I'm a YouTuber. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It and meant I... that we could run light and still be able to be warm because it is winter in Japan here. Yeah. Um, and I run really cold. So uh, mm. that was a must have for me. Yeah. So yeah, that definitely helps. Sending stuff to the hotel in advance. Any 100k commute run or whatever commute run, it'll be handy. Yeah. And I guess another one is be sure to know what time sunrise and sunset is and stuff like that. Because yeah, uh, it's good to arrive before sunset. Obviously, we failed at that task, but yeah, we didn't expect the last bit to be as hard as it was. Yeah. 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 Or like, you know, bring your head torches as well. Um, yeah, if sure. you think that you're going to be going for a long time. So we started at 4 a.m. Or I think we ended up leaving at like 4.15 or mm. 4.20. Yeah. And so it was dark then, but we had the city lights of Tokyo, mm. like illuminating the path yeah. and the back streets for us, which is really nice. Uh, a little bit different when sunset in Hakone yeah. and we were going up a mountain and there's not really a lot to help guide the way. So um, yeah, sunset and sunrise, important to know. Yeah, for sure. Do you want to go Zip to gear bags? Yeah. 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 So gear? We're talking gear? Yeah. So yeah. what did you pack in your vest? Um, well I packed... I don't know who packed more, but I guess it was roughly the same. But I, anyway. think you I think you had a bigger pack, so yeah. you were able to take more. Yeah. And I'm really lucky because Soda was able to take my jacket and stuff when I couldn't like move yeah. the bag. Yeah, and more than, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, well, at the same time, obviously bigger capacity, but I wanted to be pretty minimal of what I bring. But I was trying to be mindful of the fact that it's, you know, midwinter, very cold, anything can happen. We might be stranded for a while. Mm. So it was good to pack extra layers. So I actually had like three jackets, mm. like running jackets, and then one long sleeve shirt and then one t-shirt at the bottom. Um, I did a fair amount of the run in just a t-shirt. Yeah, crazy. which is crazy to me because yeah. I was um, I was yeah. definitely in at least two, some most of the time three mm. layers. So I had like um, I borrowed Soda's like on sport, um, on cloud running jacket. Yeah. Um, and then I had my own like long sleeve running jacket underneath that, and then I had a t-shirt and you know. So I was running, I think I ran the first like 50 kilometers in that. Mm -hmm. And then I think by the time I hit the beach, it was getting a bit hot. So I did take one of those off, but um, yeah. yeah. Other important stuff, bring a buff. We both had a buff. Yeah, the wind does, got, does get chilly here. Yeah. We both had a cap. Yeah. Um, I guess I took a bit longer to wear my cap. I forgot that I had my cap, but obviously sun beating down on you the whole day. We, run, we ran from dawn till dusk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, had the whole day of sun on us so the hat helps if it rings i remember you were talking about how it can block the rain a bit so it's good in every scenario i guess yeah so, i'll always run an advisor yeah. um because it's you know very breathable but also like very protective yeah. um for me so um i guess 
We well I think yeah, I'm trying to look at Well we she... brought like a bunch of flasks as well and then filled yeah. those up when we got to the seven elevens. Mm. I brought a bunch of gels and bars, um, and I think I ate like almost all of oh no, all of my bars and I've left a few gels for later. Yeah. Um Soda got through with I mean he packed a bunch of gels but actually didn't I did no gels. Yeah. Yeah. Which crazy, but when you're yeah. in Japan the convenience stores are so good. Yeah. Actually, do you want to talk about the the convenience store trips? So, yeah, I knew that the convenience store was very good, so I knew that I don't really need to bring too much. And I actually ended up not bringing much. And because I'm pretty aware of palate fatigue, because I've done a few ultras where I'm just so fed up with gels and they're absolutely disgusting. Mm. After you've had a lot. Yeah. Obviously, I can take one or two, but yeah, I wanted to give myself a challenge, try and do it with no gels. So I want to see how much like solid foods I can get. Yeah, and this guy has a stomach of steel because he yeah. was like pounding down the onigiris and cup noodles, cup noodles and, and, and the sweets and gummy bears and yeah everything. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of amazing. And bread and yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I I was struggling. Um, <laughs> for context, I'm celiac, and I had to go in yeah. and like Google Translate the back mm, of all of the right. labels to see if I could try and eat it. Yeah. I ended up, I think eating a bunch of, I had a few onigiris, I had um, mochi, I had caramel popcorn and bananas. Yeah. Onigiris, I yeah. need to have some of that. They're great. Some mm. of them are gluten free, so mm. I thought that they were superb. Very good. Um, oh, the only thing I used was um, Tailwind as well. Mm, yeah. In the flasks, yeah. I brought electrolytes as well, so they were very helpful. I also had an extra cramp fix just in case mm. she did the fan. Yeah. Well, I just went. Yeah, I don't mind. Cool. Yeah. As long as it's not like being rude to someone. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Other tips? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if I could do it again, I'd probably pick better shoes to do it in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really like on the last... My shoes on their last legs. Yeah. Um, these guys Same. have... Um, I'm wearing the... On cloud status. On clouds, yeah. Two or three, I can't even tell anymore. I yeah. should know, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. Yeah, um, doesn't matter. <laughs> but they're feeling so flat and I brought them to Japan because I'm currently dealing with like Achilles, Achilles tendonitis. And these are the only shoes that I can sort of wear and get away with like less pain. So that was my decision to bring these shoes. Yeah. Um, but because I've been wearing them basically since Brick's Backyard Ultra, and I've worn them on many, many long runs yeah. and ultras and training sessions yeah. over the last few months. They, I think, will be uh, staying in Japan. Yeah. Um, I won't be bringing them back. A new shoe. Yeah, I bought the Super Blast while I was yeah. here, and they yeah. were um, a little bit cheaper than in yeah. Sydney as well. So. And the best bit is, we went into the Asics store because she wanted to buy an ear warmer. Yeah. And then we walk out with. A pair of shoes, I got a pair of shorts that I was wearing today. Yeah. And then Soda also got a pair of shorts. Yeah. And no ear warmers. So <laughs> yeah, no ear warmers. Um, Next to the best yeah. yeah. To be honest, my ears weren't too bad because I had like I was walking around shopping the day before. Mm. The wind chill was incredible. And as I said before, I run cold and I was like, this is just I need to make sure that I'm feeling okay for tomorrow if I want to try and get through hundred kilometers. Yeah. Um and so I was like, you know, ear warmers would be Really nice because my ears were very icy. I reckon I'm <clears> surprisingly <throat> good in the cold for a skinny guy. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the Ziplocs actually came in very helpful. So make yeah. sure to have a lot of Ziplocs. Like put all your valuables in it. You don't want it to get ruined in the sweat and or even break, especially ele electronics and passports and whatever. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I mean, I can say a very niche tip, which is um, this run was quite. Well, majority, or if not all of it, was on the road, apart from 10 meters of trail when we were like, nope, and we yeah, went back. Yeah, we went back. Um, but the road is very uniform, right? It's not like a trail where you're landing in different angles. Trail running is actually good in a way, because because you land in different angles, you're working different muscles. Mm. We, we're really overloading the front and the back muscles of the legs yeah. on the road. Yeah. So there were times where I purposely stood on the inclines and like, I don't know if you noticed at all, but sometimes I went to the right and like oh, went on the slope and the left. Yeah, you and did. Not I did like a lot of random doing. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And if there was like a little dirt patch, I would purposely land on that wheeling and stuff like that. That's a really to niche work. tip. Yeah, yeah, pretty niche. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, because a hundred k's of the same uniform step is not great. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's my small hack. But apart from that, yeah, easy. we're feeling good. We're feeling much better. We um, <laughs> we ended. Yeah. It was getting a bit cold. It was dark. We um managed to get there in the end. Had our hot showers and got, a ton got of some food. food. Yeah, which we're really excited to dig into. So mm. yeah, I'd say today was a success. I don't know. I'm running hundred kilometers in Japan. <laughs> Sounds yeah, like a good a holiday to me. <laughs> ideal holiday. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't want it any other way, really. You know? We're gonna sound like idiots. Yeah, yeah. They're to most like, people. They won't understand. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> we promise yeah. we can be normal sometimes. Just get us yeah. on a different day. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for watching this pretty long recap. Yeah. I might make this a separate video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. Hope it was somewhat useful. Hope it inspired you to do some crazy some things. Some crazy things, yeah. Because You'll make it work in the end, I feel like. And I'm so, it's like one of those things that I'm going to look back on in like mm. five years, ten years. I'll be like, oh, remember that random holiday where I went to Japan and ran 100 kilometers? Yeah. No one asked. We delivered anyway. Yeah. yeah? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely do it with one or two or more people. I think it adds to the experience yeah, for sure. Because yeah. different people would bring different strengths into the camaraderie or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right. All right. Thank you. Cool. <laughs>